interest in horses and riding. Um, I wasn't um, particularly sort of thinking about a competitive career or anything like that. I just enjoyed the fact that I could ride and, and do whatever I liked with horses. And obviously I then sort of went to Pony Club and got introduced to competitions and, and what have you. And sort of it, it sort of grew from there. I mean, I wasn't really until I was about 14, 15, 16 that I actually started going to competitions other than local sort of Pony Club ones. Um, and then it was more... Um, a fact of, of not wanting to compete but to prove that I within myself could be competitive with other people or to be as good. It wasn't really till I was um, sort of in my late teens or early twenties that I suddenly started to realise that you know I wanted to, to maybe go beyond New Zealand and, uh, and, and prove myself on the world stage and when I was about 21 that's when I set off to, to do that. <laughs> had to look after them, but they're there to have fun. And that was one of the biggest things. You know, we did have fun, and we used to go out uh, in the middle of the field and hop on them with no saddle and no bridle, and or ride around the roads with, with no saddle on. And it was very much a sort of, a very natural sort of thing, and you, and you had to learn balance and, and control and, and everything else to, to stay on. And uh, I think, you know, a lot of, a lot of the kids today aren't aren't allowed to do that. They're very disciplined, they have their saddle and they have to sit correctly and everything else. But they, they forget about the actual, the very natural thing of, of finding your own balance on a horse and being able to stay on there. And I think that was one of the most important things we learned as kids. We get to the, the first uh, water fence, which I guess was about a third of the way round. And as we land in over the drop, suddenly my left leg goes and I look down and I can see the stirrup hanging off the end of my foot. And this is 200 metres before the, the big corner at the Vicarage V and so many things went through my mind at that minute. It was like, oh sh... And all this time I'm galloping along there trying to figure out what to do with my stirrup, what to do, pull up, keep going. And I think, well, I'll just jump this next fence and then I'll have another thing. Try and figure out a way on how to um, stay in the saddle without thumping up and down the horse's back because I still have like about three, three miles to go or something. The way to do it was sort of bring my left knee up over the front of the saddle and sort of perch myself off his back that way. I mean, I tried with, with no stirrups and that didn't work and I tried standing up in one stirrup and that didn't work. So. That was the, the best way that I could find that I was sort of the least hindrance to the horse and the most comfortable for me. Um, I couldn't believe it when we got through the finish. I mean, I was completely exhausted. Um, and I did look at my watch then, and we'd actually finished inside the time. If there is a shining attribute that singles Todd out as the supreme master of his craft, it is his ability to get the best out of horses in the very top events that he may only have sat on for the first time just days before. Cue the Irishman at Batman. Well, the thing about when I take on these chance rides is, um, by the time I, I came to ride the Irishman, I'd ridden a lot of different horses. Um, and they're, they're all different, they all go slightly different, and, and I think probably one of the strengths of my riding is that I, I can adapt myself to a certain extent or allow the horse to go in the way he likes to go. I don't absolutely demand that every horse goes in the same way, although I probably ride them all similar. I don't demand that they sort of go in exactly the same way. And the other thing you've got to remember is all these horses um, are very good horses and they've all been, are all proven. Mm -hmm. 